What's up, y'all? Welcome to Political Fight Club. I'm going to give some people some shout-outs here early on. Um, other lefty YouTubers who are doing extremely good work and doing the news and basically following the rules of Fight Club and therefore they're... I'm seeing it right in front of my eyes, guys. We're seeing Political Fight Club kind of coalesce in the way that I always thought it would. What is happening is, I think you guys are... If you're ever watching this, I think you're taking my advice of... We can drop diss tracks and really wield the power of the left and beat the algorithm and do the news at the same time. And the way that you guys are doing this is awesome and masterful and completely your own style. But the way that we're spreading information quickly, where I'm seeing a lot of us covering the same stuff but at different times of day spread over multiple days, but also the real tangible power that we are wielding against you know, the likes of The Hill and TYT is, it's devastating. Like, you can see it happening right now, and we're doing this. We're making things go viral because we're working like a network, and we're literally tangibly hurting, you know, sellouts like TYT that don't deserve any viewership, and horrible corporate entities like The Hill that don't deserve any viewership for the right reasons. So let's give a shout out. I mean, all the people that I'm paying attention to, I've listed on the show before, but just off the top of my head, we got Kyle Kalinske in Secular Talk, Crystal Ball, she has Breaking Points, that's her new show with Sagar. Um, you know, of course, Jimmy Dore, the heavyweights. Then we got Good Politic Guy, the Vanguard, uh, Justin Jackson in the Takeover, Jackson Hinkle in the Dive, uh, Fred Hampton Leftists, Status Coup, um, Bad Faith Podcast, and Richie Medhurst. I don't know if y'all saw it, but Richie dropped a diss track on Anna Kasparian with pure knowledge that should go more viral than it already has. I'm going to post a link to that below. It was pure breathing smoke. Like, it was it was so awesome. So, And he knows that better than anybody. That includes Anna. That includes me. Nobody is more better suited to drop a diss track on Anna that knows more about Syria than Richie Metter. So awesome, awesome job there, Richie. Um, but you guys, almost 70% of you guys have been covering the news in between going after TYT and The Hill. And I'm going to give you some evidence. Almost all of us have been covering these things that almost, you guys know, these vids don't get nearly the likes nor the views that a diss track does. But we're doing them anyway and getting our views via drop and diss tracks and crushing the likes of The Hill and TYT in hilarious fashion. So we all covered Steve Donziger, or almost all of us covered, um, that was the story about the environmental lawyer named Steve Donziger, who sued Chevron for nine and a half billion dollars for what they did illegally spilling oil and drilling in Ecuador. And they caused the drinking water of Thousands, hundreds of thousands of people um, in Ecuador to be tainted with oil and caused a whole bunch of cancer rates to go up. And he won the $9.5 billion settlement, and since then Chevron has avoided it, ruined his life by smearing him, calling him alleged uh, racketeerist, and uh, has he's been on house arrest for almost two years. He's been doing his rounds on all the lefty channels, and I fucking love it. Everybody has been covering this story, which otherwise wouldn't have gotten any legs without us at working as a network. So they've been all coming out at different times, and it's awesome. Likewise with the Peruvian election, where Pedro Castillo, the socialist, just beat Keiko Fujimori, the righty, the far righty, and the possible coup attempt by uh, Fujimori to overturn the results of the election. Almost everybody's covering that. Same with um, Neftali Bennett ousting Netanyahu in Israel, Neftali Bennett being the farther right of the two. And you guys know how awful Netanyahu is. Almost everybody's been covering that as well. Um, excuse me. The IRS leaks and the ProPublica story, 100% of all the people I just talked or I just mentioned covered that in some fashion and sometimes more than once. Awesome. And you know it would. That's a huge story and you'll never see it on mainstream media. And if they do talk about it, they'll frame it like, oh, who's the whistleblower? Who's the whistleblower? Uh, we should put them in the gulag. You're never going to get an honest take about what that story actually means unless you come to our network. Um, Ilhan Omar. Almost everybody I saw came to Ilhan Omar's defense when she was talking about, you know, she talking to uh, Tony Blinken about how the U.S. imperialist complex is 
as much a terrorist organization as some other terrorist organizations like the Taliban and Hamas. And uh, she's absolutely right, and she got shredded by Democrats and Republicans alike, but we all came to her aid to set the record straight. That's the way it's supposed to work. Um, and then Kamala Harris and her debacle down in Guatemala where she told immigrants basically, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, don't come to our country or we'll beat the shit out of you at the border there, Brownie. We all covered that. We all shredded her for that. And she, again, that's one of those things that people don't forget about on the left. And we all covered it at different times. That's awesome. That's good. We're doing news. And then, of course, the OPCW story, which broke far before the TYT Aaron Mate feud. And I covered it then. But that, that video didn't get a lot of views. But when coupled with the TYT Aaron Mate feud, where everybody was basically going after TYT everybody started to explain why Aaron was right. So by doing diss tracks and going after TYT and making sure we body them and protect Aaron, we also were doing the news and we gave the OPCW cover-up story legs. And now people are talking about it. And Roger Waters going after Anna Kasparian and bodying her and going viral also got it more legs. That's a good thing. That's how it's supposed to work. That's how I always wanted this to work. So the alternating of going after the hill and making fun of them for rising and how it's now falling, which I've been doing since day one. Me, that a whole thing basically was just started by me and the Vanguard just fucking around and making fun of them. And now everybody's wasting on the <laughs> on rising. And then the TYT thing, yeah, it, we went after them and we're relentlessly destroying them because they keep having bad takes and that's how it's supposed to go. But it also, like it's supposed to operate, it ended up bringing viewership and bringing attention to the OPCW cover-up, which otherwise would have been one of those boring takes that people put out there that no one looks at. So it's, it's a symbiotic relationship between the diss tracks and doing the news. And if I may, the tangible effects of those diss tracks have been absolutely catastrophic for TYT. Their viewership on their live streams is in the shitter. They'll never recover. It, I'm... I almost want to say that them going after Aaron Mate in the end is going to end up being a more of a misstep, more of a mistake strategically than even them not being on the right side of the Medicare for all floor vote thing and going up against Jimmy Dore and taking all the Katzenberg cash. That was enough, but this is a death blow because everybody's been wasting on TYT. They're in a lot of trouble. They're melting down on Twitter. They're having a midlife fucking crisis in, in real time right in front of us that has everything to do with us ripping all of them. That's a good thing. We're shedding the fat. We don't need them. And if they don't change their takes, there's no reason that anybody should take them seriously and they should always be shamed and made fun of and all that stuff. The Hill also, the way that they treated Crystal was the re reason that they're getting eviscerated. Now, like a lot of people don't unsubscribe from something simply because the hosts change when it comes to this. They'll just like stay subscribed, but they maybe won't watch the show anymore. It just, you know, moves down their subscription list. The reason that they've lost hundred and now over 120,000, and I'm going to mention why it's going to get a lot worse, subscriptions over the last two weeks is because they treated Crystal Ball wrong, and Kalinsky came out and exposed the hill for what they were doing to Crystal and Sager, and everybody basically rallied around, covered that same story, destroyed the hill, and now we've been watching them like Hawk making fun of them for all the new missteps that they're making with that circus you know, event that they've got with Ryan Grimm and Jasinski and Emily Miller, the King Clown. Like, we're just making fun of them relentlessly and they're losing subscriptions. They're bleeding so badly. And Kalinsky came in again this morning and basically he put them in a coma with that first track and then he euthanized them with this other one. He's basically like, yeah, um, I'm going to reiterate what happened. I think you should all go unsubscribe. And if he says it, when that video already has like 60,000 views, he just euthanized the hill. They're going to lose another 100,000 subscribers, which is going to make it a quarter of a million subscribers in the span of maybe a month at this pace. That's tangible. That's an institution that we all just took down by focusing our ire and our jokes at them. Political Fight Club. And I'm so proud of you guys. This is exactly uh, what I want to happen, man. It's like that scene at the end of Avengers Endgame where we got our um, our Avengers here. We got Crystal Ball, Captain America. We got Iron Man, uh, Kyle Kalinske. We got Jimmy Dore, Bruce Banner, and 
you know, pick your Thor. I don't really care. We got them four, but they need backup, man. They can't beat Thanos without us. So it's like the portal scene. We're all coming in, and with all of us focused on one thing and united, we are actually taking down institutions like the Hill, and the TYT will never recover. They will never recover. And that's us. That's all of us. The problem is we need more. We need more people to just do this. The more we do this and the more channels we have, the better chance that Political Fight Club is a, a weapon in upcoming elections. No central leadership. Follow the rules of Fight Club. We keep tabs on each other. We drop some disc tracks. We do the news. And we have an information network that spreads info very quickly. And if pointed at one thing that we don't like, we torch it. And it goes down. <laughs> That's just the, the nature. So let's do it. Start your own fight club if you haven't already. And everybody else that I just mentioned, good job. Keep up the good work. This is it. This is exactly what I was hoping would happen. Now let's get it on a bigger scale. No centralized leadership. Let's just watch each other and work as a union. That's all I'm asking. Keep fighting the good fight out there, guys. I'll see you.